it's time once again for the Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Very tired today, and it's it's. I'm just having a patch of time in the morning. I think with the length of this game, it would be wise for me to just film when I can. So this each each episode probably won't be one session like I normally do. It'll probably be uh, cut around. So don't be disoriented by that. Just embrace it. Um, it's another way of looking at time, and we can be okay. Thanks. All right, we had a lot of money burning in this round of cultural growth. Uh, three different people built taverns. Uh, Flush, Flush actually wanted to do something else, but he was too short on funds to be able to do it, so he went with the tavern. Um, Cowboy also got a tavern, as did Giraffe. Giraffe did it primarily because she wants those yellow cards. Cowboy as well. Um, they both have uh, they both have civil or empires on the table that benefit from trade. Um, what else we had? Um, some resource additions, um, and then uh, some more science for uh, Runt. So Runt should be able to um, should be able to advance this turn, as should Cat. Cat, as in Cat. Okay, we are in the midst of the start Empire phase of the game's second turn. Uh, Little Red was our our turn leader. Everyone did not have a start Empire so far until Melky. Melky is going to start the Minoan civilization. So with that we're seeing uh, Melky's getting a fairly lucky start. If anyone had higher amount of wreaths than him and the there's an event that makes it so that there's a couple events I think that void your action uh, for the turn. Someone might use it right now. Because not only does he have the Babylonians which he is going to be able to score money pretty consistently if he wants um, as well as some other points, but the Minoans, the Minoans uh, start with boats early, and they also score on boats, and they also score on holding water, and since um, no one else can construct boats yet, except for the Minoans, he's got a few turns, um, if he can get them to maneuver next round, uh, to, to score heavily on the water, uh, that would be two points per turn, and then also additional two points for the boat, so he's going to be scoring probably by next turn five points uh, every turn. So if you look around, some people have um, Destiny as their chosen action, and some people have Wild Card. The reason people have Wild Card have a Wild Card is because they have um, a civilization such as this one that can be started in um, the first age if another civilization is in play. Cowboy is one of those, and he is lucky that he is right after Melky in the turn order because he's going to be able to play the Hellenic Greeks. That's going to put the two at odds right here because that's going to stick Cowboy right there, right across from the Minoans in the island of Crete. Um, I don't think the Greeks get ships yet though, but once they do, it's going to be on between the two of them, I imagine. And the final new empire this round was giraffes, and that is the Romans. Romans are also conditional. They're conditional on the Etruscans being there. And so the Rome, the Romans are actually pretty impressive, which is maybe not surprising to you. Um, they normally can only come into age two, but if the Etruscans are there, they can come in at age one. Um, they also get to maneuver as soon as they come in. So, and plus they, they start with a lot of money, and these, these little guys with the spears here are really cheap. So, um, you know, uh, Giraffe had money to burn. She didn't even spend all her money and was able to buy all the units possible uh, at this point in the game. And I think she's probably going to make an attack on um, the Etruscans. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do for a combat system. The, the normal combat system in this game is, uh, is bluffing-oriented, and I don't mind doing that multiplayer. Uh, but if I have to do it all the time, it gets I, I just doubt myself again and again about um, the veracity of my bluffs. Um, so I'm going to probably not do that. I, I want to try and um, use a system that allows for retreats. However, there's there's one I found online that that just does combat all in one round without retreats. Um, so I got to think about that real quick, and then I'll come back, and there'll probably be a fight. All right, and here our combatants are set up in the water here. I'm just using this as a space to kind of arrange them so you can see what it looks like. Um, normally, I wouldn't have to lay them out like this because it's not too difficult to figure out, but it's kind of fun to see it like this. Um, so as you can see here, uh, because Giraffe had to leave one unit behind, um, she has exact, actually the same number of units in the battle as Flush. Now, but her units are stronger 
um, on average, well, actually a strength point stronger in every case. So this is the front line. That's going to be using the the um, the number in the upper left hand corner here, and then in half your units rounded up are on the front line. The other half are on the back line, which is where you want your archers because they they use this number. Whoops, on the, on the upper right. So um, as you can see, she has six on her front line strength points and 12 on her back, so that's 18. Flush here, he has three on his front and nine on his back, so he's 12. Okay, so it's 18 to 12. Um, I'm gonna be drawing a card for each of them. All their units are committed in every battle. I'm not doing the thing where they, they uh, normally how you do it is you can, you can secretly select how many you're gonna commit, and so you can kind of outfox your opponent because if, if you commit too many, um, you only kill what they've committed, right? So if they only commit one guy and you commit all your guys, you only kill that one guy and then you get a, a disorder marker because your guys have all charged in. And that's worse for you the next round. So, you know, it's a way that if you have low, uh, if, you ha if you're a weaker army, you can still win. You can still win this way. Um, but there's, there's not going to be really any decision making on their, their part, except for whether to retreat. So, one thing I am I am correcting that kind of bugged me about the combat system in this game is um, uh, battle isn't going to be all or nothing. I kind of like I like it how in some games the victor can lose some units, so I might do try to do something along that lines. But I'm just too tired to figure that out right now. So I'm just having it be whatever the difference is in strength points. The loser has to lose that many units. All right, so let's let's turn up. That's for giraffe. She has five. That's yeah. It's, She's got this. Oh, one. Bad for Flush. So Flush has 13. She has 23. 10 strength points. Um, and I guess we'll go with whatever, you know, strength points based on what line they're in. So these guys are going to have to go from their 1, and these guys are going to have to go from their 3. She has 10, so he could lose these 3 and one of these guys. Problem with Flush right now is he can't, um, he can't retreat. You can only retreat to controlled areas. He doesn't control any areas, so he's pretty much done. I don't think I need to play the rest of this out, um, barring any method to actually hurt the winner. Uh, there, there's no way that Flush can win. She's just decimated his entire civilization in one go. Pretty impressive surprise move. Um, all right, so next on our sequence of play is production. No one has chosen to do that this turn. Uh, production, you get money based on how many lands you have and how, ma how many cities you have, but you also have to pay your armies, uh, unless you're a barbarian. So I, I think the Iranians are the only ones who wouldn't have to pay their armies. And so it's not generally a very good first move. Um, then we have trade and progress. Did anyone choose that? Someone might have. Um, I think we have we have a lot of maneuvers. Is, is what people? Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. So then we got a maneuver, and we'll start with Little Red here, the ancient Iranians, and I'll have to think about where they want to go. Predictably, Little Red's ancient Iranians moved right into Europe and began to spread out. Now they're up against the mighty Amazons, however, which are right there, um, and that's going to put Runt in an interesting uh, decision place right now because she has to decide whether she wants to confront them right now when they're kind of weak. Uh, she could probably take a couple of them. Um, Little Red's kind of got a good uh, range though. These guys are across the river so they're going to get a defensive bonus if she tries to attack there. Um, likewise, yeah, she's in a pretty good, I mean they're, they're not going to probably hurt her right now. Um, and these guys they have a, th a three stack which would, you know, unless she wanted to go all in against them. That would be a problem. I, I don't think she's going to want to deal with them right now, especially since she has this nice wheat spot that's out in the open. And she has Sienya. She has to decide whether, how she wants to use her. She doesn't want to lose her. That philosopher is going to give her a lot of points. Um, but does she want to keep him with the army, or does she want to tr like head somewhere else and do some, some cool things? I guess she could head up towards this, this tree here. Uh, we'll have to see. And Run's taken a little bit of a risk with her, but not too much of a risk, come to think of it. So the rules are, um, 
in order for an army to do anything to a, a lone leader, they have to find them because they get to they get to sneak around. Uh, that would be a stealth check. Her stealth is yellow, which if you don't know Duel of Ages, is it's the second best stealth you can have. She's going to roll against, I think, a black rating. So I, I guess it would help if I got a table out to show you what kind of number she would have to, they'd have to, she'd have to hit to evade the army. I'll be right back. And so she would fail on a 12, uh, if I'm reading that table correctly. It's been a while since I've played Duel of Ages, but I've played it a, a few times. Um, yeah. So, uh, and the reason reason why that is is because they don't have any red cards. No one has any red cards yet, and the red cards are what influences uh, your kind of defense against leaders. And poor flushes Etruscans, they are not going to get to do anything. They are going to, um, I'm going to stow them on his card over here. And this card is going to be out of the game until um, there's, a, there's a reset with, um, with these guys due to a discard empire action. So that's going to leave us to uh, the Gauls. Gauls are uh, kind of got a bit of a blessing. Not really, though, because Giraffe didn't lose any units on that. It would have been nice. I think she probably actually would have preferred to go against Flush's forces than Giraffe's. Remember, she scores on beating people. But then, you know, Runt's people are coming, so she might just want to leave Giraffe alone and head over here and get these weaker individuals there instead of dealing with that stack. Maybe she'll try and take the mountains in order to, I don't know, be annoying. We'll see. And Kat's playing defensively. She tends to do that unless she's got a, a sure thing. Occasionally she takes a big risk, but um, she's basically holding the forests along this river, hoping to contain the Romans in with the Greeks and the Macedonians and just kind of let them deal with it and um, hopefully take the majority of Europe and score points that way and maybe chip off some of these guys to get some additional points uh, if the opportunity arises. Melky, unlike everyone else, perhaps because he has the Hammurabi Gregory uh, companion with him, is the one player who is not actually going to be maneuvering this turn, actually flushes in either, but flush did mean to, so that's going to bring us back to Cowboy. Cowboy's kind of got a nice big patch. He could, he could head into Africa and take that for his own. Does he even... He doesn't score on any of that, though. That's the problem. The Phoenicians really just want to be by the water, and they want to progress. Um, let's see what he's going to do. And Cowboy's a bit of a farmer. I I don't even remember what happened in the, the Origins game. But there was something with him and farming during that game. Maybe it was just a, a little narrative in my mind. I might not have even talked about it. But um, he's sticking to the plains here. Just... Uh, just getting some economics. Uh, Giraffe also went ahead and moved. She's doing kind of a defensive ring, um, trying to take these mountains here to hold on to India. She's not going to have a lot of competition unless someone pulls up one of the few um, Indian civilizations. I I'm blessed in not knowing this deck and knowing all the the civilizations in, in there. I, I think that would make for a different sort of game. Um, also, possibly interesting because you know you could you can make certain risks um, but she's doing a defensive ring so if someone does come in this archer can do nothing um, you know it's just an elephant space anyway but she's going to start scoring on India pretty heavily then she also has the Romans giraffes in a very good position right now and that's going to end the maneuver phase um, I think destiny is next and I think pretty much everyone is going to be doing that starting with little red little red I have tucked in here a couple of cards that have to do with destiny. He's doing a time wrinkle, so um, those who that actually chose the destiny action are going to get to do it twice. It's a special ability card. And then those who chose wild card, because um, they thought they might be able to start an empire, are, are not going to be able to do destiny twice. I hope this isn't entire, entirely a ball of blather for all of you. I realize I was talking about Destiny, I didn't even say what it is. Destiny is basically you get to discard cards and draw new cards uh, up to a hand of six. Um, Little Red, however, he played another special card. He's doing Super Destiny this turn. That lets him draw an extra three. Um, I think he's actually going to save that for a second draw, though. Um, just because, you know, otherwise he would, he would have to discard uh, uh, even more cards. Alright, so that was a lot of 
card drawing and discarding because some people got to do it again. Some people were happier than others with what they got. So that, that ends the destiny round. Now we're going to Civilize. Now Civilize has a lot of different things in it. And we actually only have one player who chose to Civilize this turn and that is Melky. So one thing Civilize they get to do is they get to play one artifact and then uh, certain special events that are not uh, usable at other times that are not specified with other times. Then they could remove a leader if they want. Uh, for example, if they were full on the number of leaders that they could have. Um, which he is not going to be doing because he can have another leader. Um, and then they can also adopt a religion or government. That's also kind of like a kind of like another artifact they can have. Um, get some more cities, or or they can flip units. So say. All these units are double-sided. Oh, this is an important point about the game. So we have archers here. On the other side are um, cannons, which you can't have till you're in 25. So if you're in 25, you could modernize and flip all your archers over. Um, and then urbanize, which is you can have cities, or you can make your cities bigger if you're in an appropriate age. So Melky's going to have a lot of different things he can do. I'll let you know what he's done afterwards, and we're going to be drawing another one of these cards, which is fun. So this, this is going to be an unnamed leader. There's not a leader on the card that he automatically gets. If he was an H2, he could get Nebuchadnezzar, but by then Hammurabi, Gregory, would be gone. Uh, we're going to draw from this cup, and it could be that there's no leader at all. We'll see. Oh, no leader at all. That's too bad. I was really looking forward to drawing a card for Melky. And that kind of blew his turn. He can't really, he can't do any urbanizing. You know, he's not far enough along to do any modernizing. Um, but he was able to make the Hanging Guardians of Babylon. Um, since this is our first at artifact of the game, and that's going to give him a point of glory. Uh, when you put, a, put down a green artifact, you get that. Uh, I should talk about artifacts, because that's something that crosses over between the two games here. Um, all of, each of these seven wonders um, also has a corresponding artifact in um, this game here. Now that that makes it kind of problematic because if I you know if I disregard the artifacts on the cards that makes some cards inherently worse than they were designed to be. So I'm, I'm going ahead and letting them be here. However, you know what do I do if um, uh, Runt here creates hers because I was planning on uh, her own hanging guardians. I was I was planning on them getting the game effect, and I think I think that's probably going to trump this one. I don't know if it'll remove it from the game or not. Um, maybe she just gets it as well. Um, these are a lot more. Uh, they're they're kind of fragile. You know, if, if that space is lost to him for any reason, he loses that artifact. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So um, a lot of these have direct correlations. Uh, so, like, we have the Pyramids of Giza, there are the Great Pyramids in this, there's, um, the, there's a, the Colossus of Rhodes is in this game, the, the Hanging Gardens, and the others I just found um, decent corollaries, uh, so it worked out. Alright, scoring in progress has happened, and take a look at Melky there. He scored, um, let's see, he scored three off the Minoans. Next turn he should be able to score five, and then he's after the Babylonians, he got two. So he got five points. That's a lot more than anyone else. Uh, Kat got three just off of her galls um, for having dominance in Europe, which is pretty impressive. Um, but things are starting to spread out more. Little Red, despite, well, I, I guess the ancient Iranians haven't really done a lot yet, and they don't have a lot of scoring opportunities. They're just not super great. Their vacating ability is interesting. Um, but it's hard to to make good use of that. Uh, I guess he can he can move into the forest here and kind of spread out and maybe maybe get something off of that. But until then, he's he's just way back here, even behind Flush, who doesn't have any empires at all. Done another spin around the Seven Wonders wheel. Um, we finally seen seen some blue cards come into play. Both Giraffe and Cowboy got. Uh, blue cards. Cowboy has the most, so he can do he can do events to anybody. Um, in other news, you know, some people got some resources, some other yellow cards and whatnot. Um, biggest other news is Runt now has two science cards, so she is the only one who's going to her her civilizations are the only ones that are going to be able to progress this next turn, and maybe for a while. I don't recall seeing any other science cards in the deck. Uh, there were some, but people couldn't build them, so there there might be another one coming out. 
think maybe uh, one for Ka in here. Let's, uh, we can just look, it's not a secret. Um, nope, there isn't, so we'll see.